time I'd like to call our second special waste control meeting together to try for us to come to some decisions on our waste and waste management for our future of our trash. Our headliner tonight is Rebecca Caldwell, Rebecca Caldwell from GNRC. We're going to bring her to the table. Mr. Nolan, if you'd like to come and sit with her, it would be fine. It's just up to you. And we'll get started on the, her knowledge. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank Welcome. you all for having me. Um, what I will tell you is I am here to just simply, hopefully, leave you with some tools to help you with decision making. Um, I've attended lots of y'all's meetings. We've had a lot of conversations individually. Um, overall, I think you all have grasped this topic pretty well, and I want to say hats off to you because it's a tough topic. T tough topic to understand and follow. So initially, I think the problem that you, you all have identified overall has been basically Middle Point Landfill is going to get full one day. And regardless of when that happens, what I'll tell you is this conversation needs to happen. So regardless of whether it's sooner than later, um, the solid waste industry is a wicked problem. It's a problem with lots of moving parts. And I know that each of you all have dove into that, but for most people, it's just the garbage at the curb and it disappears, or the garbage at the convenience center and it disappears. So ultimately, how do we manage residential waste material generated in Rutherford County once the landfill is closed? <clears throat> this is a tool from the EPA. It is a solid waste hierarchy. And basically, the goal of this tool is to identify the most environmentally preferred solid waste management method for each type of material. So you start with your redu redu reduce or reduction, you start uh, move to reuse, and you've got your recycling, recovery, and disposal. And I have public education over there on the right because regardless of what you do, public education is a key. We've learned a lot about that with the recycling markets recently. You've seen that in the headlines, but overall, Folks want to do the right thing, they just got to know what that is. They just, if they don't know what to do, then they don't do it. But if you tell them, nine times out of ten, they want to do the right thing. Um, public education is one of those things that is often you don't see on the backside. So it's one of those things that's very easy to take out of a budget simply because you don't see the result on the backside. Um, so public education, I would, I would say, is going to be key in any decision you make simply because you need to tell folks what you want and how they need to handle it as far as, um, as far as their own residential waste. I will say to you throughout this presentation, I'll talk primarily about residential waste simply because, and you notice that on the first slide, simply because the state requires counties to manage your residential waste within your county boundaries. So anything beyond that, um, I, you know, I, I leave the commercial, industrial, and institutional to the side simply because residential is where we focused for our solid waste master plan with GNRC. Um, again, most favored at the top, least favored at the bottom, but the disposal piece, which is landfilling, is essentially what we do the most of. And this is actually in your brochure at the bottom. So this is your handy dandy tool. For you all that got the actual plan, this is just your summary of, or the highlights of. So materials management, you've heard us talk about what materials we have, how we should manage them, what we should do with them, and ultimately, an integrated system will look at all components, consider each type of material, and manage it based on whether it's your local market, whether it's your local infrastructure, the facilities you have. So if you look up at the top, you've got, or at the bottom, you've got organics on the far left. You've got food waste, yard waste, or brush, and I'll tell you, Food waste on the residential side, the volume there is not very high. Because if you think about what you throw away at home, yes, you throw food away, but when you start to compare that to restaurants and schools, um, universities, that type of, of venue, then all of a sudden you have a much larger volume to actually create, um, to actually create compost. Recyclables, we've talked about those um, primarily. Cardboard, paper, plastic, glass, and metal, including aluminum. That's a pretty standard list. Um, your household trash. 
I mentioned hazardous waste because regardless of what decisions you make and regardless of which type of facilities you decide or which services you decide are most important for your community, the hazardous waste has to be considered. Now you all actually have a um, hazardous waste drop-off event twice a year. Um, so I would, I would say that's, you know, that to continue that would be an important component. Um, simply because the hazardous waste is out there, you just have to have a way to manage it. Um, and then the C and D over here on the far right, the construction and demolition, that is not a residential waste stream. But it's a waste stream that's become a problem because when our, and you all have had this experience, when our C and D construction and demolition landfills fill up, all of a sudden that material is going to a landfill that we could typically bury garbage in or deliver garbage to. So basically what you're seeing is you're seeing space that could be used for household trash filled up with construction and demolition debris. Um, and a lot of that's because of pricing, uh, logistics, where you are, how far it is, um, and habit. One of the things about an integrated system that's nice, if you have cardboard and it's clean, it can be a recyclable, it can go through the recycling system through a, um, through a MRF material recovery facility. But if it's soiled cardboard, if it's your pizza box, all of a sudden it can be diverted over to a compost operation. So you've got, if you have the integrated system, which is a touch of everything, and you look at the materials you have and you determine how best should we manage or handle this material, this material. Obviously you need broad categories like what we have here, but the benefit is that you would have other alternatives and other outlets for the materials you decide to manage. So when we look back at the hierarchy, we look at reduce, reuse, and recycle, and that's pretty common. Um, I think you all have probably heard this for years. It's been around for a while. One of those things that has, has um, it stood the test of time, so to speak. Um, reduce is basically not creating waste in the first place. And then the reuse allows products to be used to their fullest extent. In other words, you buy used, you buy reusable material or reusable items. Um, products with less packaging, that's a, a challenge at times, depending on what you're buying. But to actually be mindful of that is key. Um, repurpose your household items. We've mentioned that the consistent list of materials collected for recycling. So one of the things that we've talked about as solid waste directors throughout the region is everyone collects different materials. Everyone recycles different materials. So if you move from one city or county to another, all of a sudden that list changes. And all of a sudden how you prepare it or how you, you know, how you set it out or how you deliver it to your convenience center is different. So one of the things that we've stressed from, well stressed to me from directors was, if we all had a common suite of materials, what would that look like? And wouldn't that make better sense for all of us to work together to have a common list of, and you all have these already, um, plastics one and two, mixed paper, cardboard, metals including aluminum, and then the glass. Which I mentioned on the previous slide. So basically, as other counties and cities start to look at their materials, they start to look at what they can recycle, where, where the markets are. There are um, southeast markets that are out there that will buy recycled materials, but it has to be clean. So that's where your contamination factor comes in. Um, contamination is a big issue. It's what's caused us to have an excess of recyclable materials now. Um, this is, and, and what we've seen with recycling is a typical economic supply and demand model. Um, you know, we had plenty of supply because there was plenty of demand, and now we've seen the flip of that, the opposite. So now we have lots of supply with little demand. Um, so basically you've got opportunities in the southeast, but we have to identify those materials, which is that short list of five that I've given you. Um, but we have to get it clean in order for those industries, manufacturers, to choose to purchase recycled materials as their virgin materials or to take the place of. So one of the best tools that I've seen as a public education piece is, is to just ask people, how clean would you want it if you were going to start with a manufacturing process, whatever that is. So that's a public education piece, but it's also a piece of the puzzle. Um, how, which materials do you want to recycle? How do you want to manage specific materials? Um, what works best for you all? What do you have the most of? Composting, we've had various conversations about composting. Um, 
think Commissioner Harris actually presented our composting to you all with some good detail. Um, it is the process is the composting, and then the actual product end product is the actual compost. Um, I'm going to back up and say something more about recycling. The quality versus quantity. Um, for years, we've talked about quantity. For years, we've said we need to make sure we recycle 25% or more of our waste. And the problem now is that's fine to get to 25% or more, but if it's not clean, it's not being recycled necessarily. So all of a sudden, we found ourselves in a position where should we push for quantity or should we push for quality? And what I've, I've explained to people is if we would push for quality and push for the public education and, and the uh, basically contamination training of this is what contamination is, this is what contamination isn't, um, all of a sudden you have a cleaner product, it's a quality product. Now, I have a lot of people that say, won't people stop recycling? They might at first, but I think if you make it simple and if it's a short list and you move from one community to another, all of a sudden you're seeing a consistent pattern. Um, I think that more people will recycle in the end. But initially, I think there may be a slump. I think folks may, you know, there may be a handful of people that say, well, this is, you know, this isn't, what, this is just too much to change how I do things. Um, and that's understandable. Everyone has other things in life other than to manage their recyclables. Um, the quality material here basically determines its end use. Um, obviously, if it is of a certain high quality and the, the lab testing of the final product is good enough, they bag it and you buy it at Home Depot and or Lowe's and or your local hardware store or your local uh, landscape company. So basically you're looking at, again, a material that is, is recycled, if you will, but it's primarily organics or food waste, um, yard waste, brush, that type of thing. But basically it becomes a new product that can then be used. And those materials don't go to a landfill, they're actually diverted. Um, again, the feedstock depends on the process that you decide. We've heard that conversation here. Um, but composting is a viable option for some of the materials that you have. Like what kind of market have you got for that? It's that and that's part of what you have to look at. Where, where does it go? What do you do within the end? Um, that's why I call this a wicked problem, because there are lots of moving parts to it. And if you truly manage based on the hierarchy and you truly manage based on material or by material, it takes some effort. Once you get that system in place, you all of a sudden have a full system where you can actually inter, you know, interact. Basically, it truly is an integrated system. So again, when I'll use the, the pizza box, you don't recycle your pizza box even though it's cardboard, but you can put it in composting. And what percentage of, of our waste stream would that entail? The, um, if you look right here on your brochure, this trash can here. And basically this is from the Metro Nashville Waste Characterization Study, so it's not specific to Rutherford County, but it is a pretty good indication of our overall waste stream here in Middle Tennessee. So you what have your metal, your plastic, your organics would be the 18%. It's not much. It's not, but when you start to actually pick that apart and you say, if we're going to recycle our metal and then we're going to recycle certain plastics and we're going to recycle the organics, all of a sudden you're near, you're near 50 percent. Not not thinking that you could get every you know every little pound of material, sure. but thinking that you could get a good portion of it with good public education and participation. But if you have no place to send it. Mm -hmm. And, is and that an effort in fertility? It depends on it, it depends on what the market is. I've got you know several folks that are interested in doing construction and demolition debris recycling, but there's some legislation out there that says if it's diverted from a, from a, a, a class one landfill, it's considered recycling. So anytime you actually bury it in a construction and demolition debris landfill, it's considered recycled, but but it's still not diverted from a landfill. So it's a definition thing. It's an interpretation thing. But as soon as, um, as soon as folks start to consider that, which is happening now, um, just to look at that and say, what does that look like? Well, it looks like the potential for changing one definition then leads to the opportunity for someone to come in and build a, com a construction and demolition debris recycling operation. All of a sudden, that material goes elsewhere. Um, it's, it's a true, it's a business model of several small businesses within one. Creates jobs but it depends on what you want to do as far as the materials you have and what you think your community can bear as far as 
habits and or change and or economically. Um, some communities have chosen to landfill everything at this point because the recycling markets fell apart. Um, if you get folks out of the habit, it's hard to get them back in the habit. Um, I think it just depends on what you're looking at overall and where you are. Um, several places that will actually, throughout Tennessee, that will take plastics, metals, um, any of the things on that list, but they have to be clean. So the cycle for a solid waste system essentially is you have to collect it and you have to transport it and potentially you process it and or dispose it. And so the collection piece, you all are in the collection piece using your convenience centers. Um, obviously the city of Murfreesboro has a, a model that uses the curbside collection. Um, transportation, trucking is pretty common for us. I would tell you that rail and barge, so train or boat, um, are starting to be options for us as we see tipping fees increase. Um, processing would be whether you <coughs> process it as recyclables at a material recovery facility, whether you process it as compost, or whether you process it in a transfer station. And essentially the transfer station is where you are still hauling, you know, whether it's to a landfill or, or elsewhere, you're still hauling a larger amount. Basically you're processing it by putting volume from smaller trucks into larger trucks, um, or rail cars, or, or barge. Um, Typically, you'll still use a landfill for some material, even in a waste to energy system. You still have 10% on the back end that you have to do something with. So there's, you know, there's still that component that you need to consider. I will tell you, um, basically, you're in the collection and disposal business. You're in the collection and transport business. Collect it, you transport it, and you actually deliver it to the landfill directly. So when you look at that. And you'll look at overall at what we're seeing as far as landfills in Middle Tennessee. This is what you have. Um, this is a map of our area. The orange outline is actually the area here at the bottom of the brochure. So these are the counties that are included. And essentially, I think transportation is going to be the biggest problem overall for all of us simply because trucking and infrastructure and drivers and all the things that go with that piece are starting to be more difficult to fulfill. And so as we continue to grow, as we continue to see more more waste volume, we're going to continue to have the same problems. Rebecca. Um, yes, sir. It's okay, Mr. Chairman? You need to look. Okay, I'm looking at these landfills. Mm -hmm. All right. How, when do they disappear? It depends. So if you look at this at the top, so what I did was I took each of your convenience centers and I took the distance from the convenience center to Middle Point Landfill and the average distance is 30 miles. Now in talking with Mac, that could be an hour, hour and 15 minutes. It just depends. No, okay, you're, no what I'm saying is... life expectancy? Yeah, life expectancy, yes. So if, if Rutherford County chooses to take, Rutherford County and the city of Murfreesboro choose to take their 80 plus thousand tons of garbage a year to Smith County, all of a sudden the life expectancy today becomes less because you're adding to their volume. If you decide to take bits and pieces to different landfills and disperse it amongst them, in other words, when Middle Point Landfill decides to close the gate, there's 4,000 tons of material that goes there every single day. And regardless of who collects it and regardless of, of how it gets there, who's hauling it, you're going to have 4,000 tons of material that has to go somewhere. The closest, and these are round trip miles, the closest would be Smith County and then you've got the Cedar Ridge landfill in, Mar in uh, Marshall County, which is in Lewisburg. It's a waste management landfill. What was that number again that you said? It's, I've actually got it on another I'm slide. It's 86. 300. And 10,000 plus tons. We'll see that on the next slide. So what was, what was your figure? So the 86,000 is that is the actual amount that, that the <coughs> county plus the city of Murfreesboro managed. In other words, that's what was dropped off at your convenience centers, and that was what was collected by the city of Murfreesboro. But that 310,000 tons is primarily based on your entire county population. Which so, is what so we're if you responsible choose, for. Yes. Yes, sir. So if Republic is telling us they got 
seven or eight years left. Mm -hmm. What does Smith County got? Well, they had a year and a half, and they've just gotten an expansion approval. Um, it depends on how much waste they choose to take. It depends on how many how many contracts they have. It depends on how much waste they accept. If they only accept Smith County waste, obviously they're gonna it's gonna be a bit more expensive, but they're gonna have more airspace. So, but if we give them our trash, then <coughs> what, is, what I'm trying to get to, commissioners is. We have a, an ex, expiration date over here, and so this is viable if we had to start shipping, you know. And if you look yeah, at this it, number, really could be, mis I mean, not misleading, but it could be uh, not all the information because there could be, we could have to go a lot further than 278 miles. Well, and what I'll tell you is those are round trip miles. Right now you go 30 miles. So if you figure if you started to go to Smith County, all of a sudden you need to triple or quadruple, I would say quadruple, add three more trucks of the same type if you continue doing it the way you're doing it. So if you continue to use roll-off trucks that go from your convenience center directly to a landfill, the next closest <laughs> landfill by miles is going to be Smith County. So all of a sudden those trucks are out of rotation for that long, however long it takes to get there and back one truck that goes to Middle Point and back now is all of a sudden traveling 112 miles round trip. And, and 112 miles is, is relative, and that's the only, that's the only, um, the actual number to come up with from a map, because you don't know what kind of traffic you're going to run into. You don't know what route you'll take. You don't know, you know, those are all the variables we deal with every day. I will tell you that since this map was created, which was last week, um, Decatur County, landfill over on the far southwest side their contractor has announced they will close their gate in about 90 days and so even though that was the furthest away it's no longer an option excuse me yes sir i think what our commissioner was trying to get at so uh, let's just say fast forward Middle Point closes. Mm -hmm. How many years does Cedar Ridge have by county and county? So right now, those are they averaging about seven or eight years, also. Yes. And and some of them have room to expand. Some okay, of them. This yeah. one, this one, if we slow down the the waste stream at Middle Point, we get more years. But if they speed up the waste stream, then it shortens that time. And and you can. That's the that's the whole idea of. You can control that based on what you accept or what you don't, what the price is at the gate. And, and it's, you know, if you look at this, there are, there are the two largest customers that Republic has at the, at the Middle Point Landfill are Rutherford County and Davidson County. And when you ask folks where does your trash go, mine doesn't go to Middle Point. It's not a problem for me. Well, where does yours go? Well, it goes down to Cedar Ridge. Well. Okay, but what happens when some of that 4,000 tons starts to fill up Cedar Ridge? This There's is a, just to say, I think transportation is going to be a challenge yeah. one way or the other. There's a uh, recycling company in Coffee County right by the jail. Mm -hmm. um, they're in Manchester. So they've got a tipping floor. It's a private industry. Tipping floor comes in, they dump the trucks, knuckle boom picks it up turns around, drops it in a long haul truck, mm -hmm. open, open top. They're going from there to Bradley County, mm -hmm. going across Mount Eagle Mountain, down through Chattanooga and up to Bradley County. Mm -hmm. So. And, and part of that is, so if you look at this map and you say, okay, well, it costs us this much per mile. If I can get to a landfill that's 260 miles round trip, but they're only going to charge me 10 or 11 or $12 a ton when I get to their gate, is that better than trying to haul to Smith County that may charge you $35 or $40 when you get to the gate? So, so basically you have a formula. The formula is distance and or tip fee or gate rate. What are you going to pay when you get it there and what's it going to cost you to get it there or from point A to point B? I think railway will be something that's important to consider. Um, there's rail network throughout Middle Tennessee, but as we see more and more trucking um, companies are struggling to find drivers. Um, 
traffic is traffic is a challenge for drivers, and when tractor trailers are sitting still, it's just money sitting there. Um, I think that's a challenge for a lot of trucking companies or a lot of transportation companies. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So is recycling and berry cover, is that the only recommendation that the GNRC has for us out here? GNRC was, basically we've said it would be good to see several counties and or cities work together to create an integrated system. So if you pick and choose three or four counties, three or four cities, whatever those partners look like, you all of a sudden have make, you have a pool of resources, not just Rutherford County. You have resources in the way of land and or space. You have resources in the in the way of, you know, we mentioned Coffee County. Um, is there something here close to you all or closer to you all? There's not a, a material recovery facility um, in maybe Coffee County or maybe Cannon County or even Southern Davidson County. So all of a sudden, if everyone looks at it overall as a big picture, 30,000 foot view, um, everybody's sharing resources and you're also able to feed the system so each component is efficient. Has there been a survey by, by anybody uh, that actually, and I know that we're responsible mm -hmm. statutorily yes, for the residential, but uh, you know, I, I look at the tornado that that we had several years ago that cut the life of the uh, middle point by what, did you say 10 years, Max? Rather for county landfill, right. by, by 10 years. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, that scenario, I pray never happens again, but it's certainly good. Um, is there some way of knowing what, what the big waste streams are here in Rutherford County, like MTSU, St. Thomas, our, our school system, our city school system, do we know? Do we know what's coming coming our way through all those different entities? Because you all aren't you all aren't collecting it, you aren't capturing all of it in one location or in one system. You know what the volume is overall. I can tell you that obviously restaurants and that type of thing are going to have more food waste. Universities typically have food and and paper waste um, based on it. But some of the others I'm not sure about. Um, office space versus restaurant space, obviously paper, food waste. Um, it depends on what the business is. It depends on how big it is, how successful it is. Um, so I, I can't, it, yeah. Mayor, is that, is that something that we could maybe get uh, MTSU or the chamber to do for us to, to actually let us know what our streams are? How big, well, we, we know what the streams are, but how big they are. Sure. So you're talking about a waste characterization study similar to what Davidson County Well, that sounds a lot prettier than the way I said it. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, that's, thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Right. Your question is just a little bit. Uh, last budget year, uh, what Rutherford County solid waste managed as far as trash was 44,529.2 tons. Of that, 6,263 tons was front loader trash, which was is now 63 schools, city and county, plus the county buildings, the jail, the nursing homes, the, the workout, those those things that we service. So as far as the, the school system here, Rutherford County, City of Murfreesboro, and Rutherford County combined, we service both of them. And we don't service any of the private schools. Or MTSU, Chris, uh, or the yeah. hospital. That's correct. All yeah. that falls commercial. Is that yeah. right? MTSU uh, has their own truck. Yeah. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Who makes up the GNRC? There are 13 counties and 52 cities. It's the northern Middle Tennessee region. The counties. Mm -hmm. Give me a quick rundown. The county, just counties. Um, Stewart, Montgomery, Robertson, Trousdale, Davidson. Dixon, Cheatham. Thank you, Wilson. <laughs> Trials Day. Oh, I'm sorry, Houston, Humphreys, Rutherford, and I'm missing one. Williamson. <coughs> Out of that collection, do you know how many of them actually use Republic Landfill? Primarily Rutherford County and Davidson County. And that's all. 
the, the others use it for, you know, for maybe a load or two here and there, but not as a regular. So the other counties use the other landfills you had on that site? Mm -hmm. Several of them use by county, several of them use um, Sumner County uses Smith County. Williamson goes to Cedar Ridge. William, Williamson goes over to Cedar Ridge. Um, Montgomery and Stewart use by county in Montgomery County. Murray Robertson. was going to West Camden. I'm not sure where they're going now. Where, which? Murray. Murray, yeah. They are. They still go to West, well, West Camden or Cedar Ridge, either or. I, I um, swear that I remember a million tons going into Middle Point each year. 300,000 of it's us, 400,000 of it's Davidson County, and then then there's another almost 300,000 from everybody else. Yeah, a mix of, of other customers. The annual progress report is not completed and sent out yet, but we got some preliminary numbers the other day from them. Davidson County was a little over 500,000, and ours has actually gone down. Because? No, no. I can't answer the question. They just gave us the numbers at all. Oh, okay. Do you hear any concerns out of Davidson County over this issue? There are some. They're having similar conversations, but because they have contract with Republic and because they continue to use Middle Point Landfill, they, I mean, they have an option to extend. So they're looking at it, but they're taking, taking the time between now and then. Obviously, Mayor Cooper is fairly new to the role he's in. Um, he's getting up to speed quickly. Um, but there are questions, similar questions to what you all are asking. They have different services in place already simply because it's a metro government. A lot of their services are in curbside. Um, a lot of it's franchised or actually it's not franchised, I don't think. I think it's just contracted um, for certain areas of their, certain incorporated areas of their county. Their option to extend is 10, 12 year extension? I think it's five. Five. If I'm not mistaken. So, so, wait a minute, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Briley had his plan. He was going to unveil it in like March, and then he kept delaying and delaying. I guess because he was in the heat of a, a race, and so they delayed in the unveiling of the plan. And then he kind of came out with it, but I'm not sure. And so now you got a new mayor. Mm -hmm. He's just trying to. He's drinking from the fire hose. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I would assume it's all on hold. He's got to put his own plan together. He's, yeah, well, yeah, and they've got to consider what, what the plan is. How did we get there? Kind of like you all have done with the GBB plan. You stepped back and took a peek at it and said, okay, what did this? You, some of you were here. Some of you understood it from the beginning. Some of you know what it said, but you wanted to dive into it and see how does this affect us directly? How, how can I use this as, as, as a decision-making tool? But they are up against the wall in five years with their contract with the mm -hmm. public, so I, I know that and, they've got to act quickly. And five years isn't a long time. No. Um, they actually rolled their it's a zero waste plan for, for Metro. If I'm not mistaken, it's at 70 percent, so their, their zero is 30 percent material that needs to be landfill. Um, they rolled it out in July, August, but they're actually doing a public feedback session, I think it is, the first week of December. So they've gotten some feedback, but um, just from their solid waste board. So they're starting to see movement there, um, if for no other reason than just to get it out there and get comment from the public. Hey. Rebecca, I've actually yeah. asked you this or something similar in the past, but since you mentioned an integrated system, which I assume you mean using the counties in the GNRC to be part of that integrated system, mm -hmm. how would you envision GNRC's plan coming together? Uh, for instance, we've got a limited amount of time left on Middle Point's landfill, mm -hmm. so either that's going to have to be extended or we'd have to find another landfill source because regardless of what anything I've seen we're going to have to have landfill somewhere um, but having said that we know that part of the component would be a landfill somewhere in in the area mm -hmm. and if we went into an authority or an integrated system is that mm -hmm. the same thing um, how would that look? Would that be the authority building the buildings, maintaining the buildings, hiring and firing the people, or would they be subcontracting? You know, how how would 
what GNRC's plan actually look. So what we've done from the perspective of solid waste directors in our in our region, um, we looked at that from the beginning and said what what makes the best sense and. Everyone's going to need, if, if everyone starts to follow the hierarchy, everyone's going to need somewhere to take their materials. There are going to need to be outlets that everyone can use. Um, one of the primary things that we discussed was creating a solid waste authority, similar to a utility board. And essentially, that would be a separate entity from your county government or any other county or city government. Ultimately, they would be a board that would run or operate this utility. So all of a sudden, solid waste would become similar to water or electric as far as utilities. Um, this, this would be a separate board that would operate for that entity. The choices of do they build the facilities, do they lease properties, do they contract for the service, those would be decisions that that board would make as that being their business entity. And I don't know that all 13 counties and 52 cities need to be part of one authority. I just think when we look at a map, if we look at a map and say, if we look at this map and just say Rutherford, Williamson, and Dixon County, maybe that makes sense. Rutherford, Marshall, Williamson, and Murray County, maybe that makes sense. Marshall County does have a county-owned material recovery facility there. Um, transfer station in Williamson County, they only take Williamson County waste. Transfer station in the city of Franklin, which takes waste from other places, that's within Williamson County. And you start to look at that and you start to look at the distance. So I'm not sure that it would make sense for, for you to necessarily haul from Rutherford County into Mississippi, but maybe it does. It depends on what the cost is. It depends on what you're hauling, where you're taking it, and what the cost is as far as miles and form of transportation or mode of transportation, as well as what you have to pay when you get it there. But if we formed an authority, basically we'd be taking this problem and saying, okay, authority, take care of this for us. And they would, mm -hmm. but you know, the cost and deciding what trash goes where, where we send our stuff, what stuff comes into our county, whether we're gonna recycle it or compost it, if we've got markets for it, all that'll be decided for us. It would be decided collectively and I would say obviously you would have representatives on a board, representatives from your county on an authority is typically how they're created. Um, and there are bylaws that are set up or like a charter for a county and or city, very similar. Um, that's what I've seen work or I've seen in other areas of the country that has seemed to be, um, it's beneficial for economies of scale, it's beneficial for the expense of creating an integrated system. And when you when you say expense, I want to expound on that a little bit. I've actually talked to some people at the state mm -hmm. about grants that might be available, say if we wanted to set up our own composting center or whatever. Mm -hmm. Basically I was said was told, sorry, uh, we don't deal with Rutherford. You got you're too big and you got too much money. We're gonna give our grant money to these smaller counties that are broke, basically, or don't have the income that we've got. So basically, we don't have grants available to us to do any of this that I'm aware of. Well, I'll apologize to you for that. Um, I'll say to you that Rutherford County is a county within the state of Tennessee. There is a grant application process. I know that there are no grant offerings right now. They will be open again in April of 2020 is the plan, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but grant funding is limited. Well, this came from a representative for the state that oversees solid waste for the whole state. It's where I got that information from as far as availability of grants. And like you said, things change, so. Well, I just think it's important that everyone, that everyone's considered. And if, obviously, if you have an authority, you're looking at more than just Rutherford County, unless you choose to make just Rutherford County an authority. Well, the, the thing that concerns me about it is, is uh, for instance, we've got up to 32 counties and maybe more bringing waste into Middle Point from all directions, uh, and I don't see Middle Point maintaining the roads. Rutherford County maintains the roads and the highways, and you know that's a lot of cost. Mm -hmm. And you know, authority would have to take that into consideration because. 
you know, so I'm taking your trash and then I'm having to fix the roads for you to run it over here. Come on, guys. I mean, I, I, you know, I've just got a, a lot of heartburn with the amount and volumes that we're getting from other places. And if it is only Davidson County, you know, hey, let's go dump all ours into Davidson County for a while and see how they, how they deal with it. It's heavy, and it's heavy truck traffic. And so all of a sudden, one more reason why rail traffic, I mean, uh, rail transportation may be an option. Well, and I like the sounds of that, and I thought that myself, when, you know, I'm throwing out the option of let's put something in Interchange City since we've got rail right there, you know, and then too, it's close to Davidson. If we actually taken something in from Davidson, it's just barely creeping into the county, you know, the, the roads there that we're having to maintain, so that would make it better. But uh, still, you know, you've still got a lot of costs that we're going to have to take care of. And, and two, you know, still are we going to build these buildings on our own or maintain them or operate them you know if we decided to put a MRF or if we decided to put something like uh, the waste away product and burn it and generate electricity you know there, i see a lot of options here and we all have but you know you get down to the nuts and bolts of what gn and rc is saying and the reason i keep not going back to that is i've had some People that have looked at this for quite a while uh, that say, hey, we like the plan that GNRC's got. And, you know, if you go in and read that book, you know, it's very thorough and, and y'all did a good job putting that together. Thank you. Uh, but still, you know, I'm not convinced yet. I, well, and I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to just say I want to give you tools to help you make the best decisions you can for your county and for your community. But, but I want to hear from you why it would be better for us to go to GNRC and form an authority. Uh, GNRC specifically, would. Specifically. I'm sorry, go ahead. Or to form a, form a waste authority with, say, us, Davidson, and maybe one or two other counties where, you know, we can split up. Mm -hmm. One of us do one thing, one do, do another, and we don't have all that fiscal responsibility just on us. You know, that's. If I have to form an authority, I mean, that's somebody else besides us is going to have to have skin in the game. You know, I'm not going to continue taking trash from all over this country and dumping it in a landfill here in Rutherford County. Not, you're not going to see me vote for that anytime in the future now or, you know. And that's a key component is the debt service. So if you have an authority, if you think about Middle Tennessee Electric, they're separate. They're separate as an authority, as a separate board, as a separate entity to manage electricity. So if you were to plug solid waste into that model, um, all of a sudden you have a board of folks that are representative of the counties and or cities that are involved or that are part of the, the authority. And then you also have decision-making ability as a, as a board, as a separate entity. The debt service is carried by that entity. Um, economies of scale, when you start to look at facilities, if you're saying, okay, build, Build an integrated system and a, a MRF maybe, and these are just rough, these are just numbers off the top of my head. A MRF may be 25 or 30 million dollars, and a waste away system may be this dollar amount, and then all of a sudden you're starting to add up to a lot of zeros and a lot of money. Um, ultimately, with 85 or 86,000 tons that you all control, which is just the piece of Rutherford County that's collected through convenience centers and the city of Murfreesboro. Um, if you started to, to pick away at that and choose certain recyclables, um, plastics, paper, cardboard, certain compostables, all of a sudden you have such a, a small amount in the end that you'll have left over. You don't really have enough material to feed a compost facility and a MRF and a landfill to keep them efficient and keep them running, up and running. Exactly. Which is part of the <clears throat> problem that I see of us trying to do it on our own. But like I said, you know, I'm not very trusting because I, you know, got some bad feelings over what's happened in the past with our landfills. And, uh, you know, I'm not shooting at anybody there. I'm just telling you how, how it is. You know, bringing nuclear waste into our landfill was the wrong thing to do to keep me happy. And, and I'm not going to get over that. Going back to one of the comments Mr. P made about if we should go and create this governing board. 
would he not lose his vote on whether he would take trash from other counties? He wouldn't have a say so in that, would he not? I think it depends. I mean, I think it depends who your voice on the board is or who your vote on the, you know, do you appoint people? Who who do you appoint on the board? What does that look like? Popul is, does, is it based on population? Is it based on, you know, how much you've put into it financially? Is it based on location? Is it, you know, what are those pieces to actually create the governing board? Um, I don't know that you'll lose your vote. You'll have a voice on the board as someone from Rutherford County that would potentially, usually those are appointed. But position. not a deciding voice. Well, that would be the board that would vote for but his voice that. wouldn't be a deciding voice. It might be an influencing yes. voice, but it would not be a decision-making voice because he had no control. Board. Right. Unless he were on the board. Thank you. One thing I see, and, and you know, I like your, I like your model. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that really bothers me about all this is, maybe you need to put a big zero up above it to start with, you know, point O is, is a state of Tennessee, is until our legislators will make a stand on waste, for instance, recycling glass coke bottles. You know, we're going to have to make some changes. They just made a made a change in the law last year where we could not ban plastic uh, throwaway bags, and we know that that we can't recycle the darn things. You know, we might can incinerate them and burn them for fuel, but we're going to have to have state at the help at the state level to reduce some of these things. You know, we want to reduce them, but if they're taking away some of the tools that we can use to reduce. That's going to hurt us, and here's the reason I'm bringing this up: is uh, <clears throat> does the GNRC lobby our state legislature to try to get things like that done? Those are things that we have conversations with legislators about. We can have those <coughs> conversations with other folks at the state level and work toward either answers to why not or answers to what the you know is there a plan to address. Um, deposits on glass bottles. I'm assuming that's what you were talking about when you said recycled glass that, bottles. That's exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about because if it was up to me, you know, there'd be a deposit on every bottle, can, even plastic bottle that's produced. Uh -huh. I don't, I'm mm -hmm. flat out, I outlaw bringing plastic bags out of the grocery stores or convenience and wherever you use plastic. I mean, there's there's no need for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, buy yourself a, you know, Handwoven bag and reuse the darn thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do some things. I've learned that from my kids. They pounded mm -hmm. on my head long enough. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's there's things that we need help with too. So you know, we don't have all the answers, but uh, and we can't decide. If we could decide these things, you know, that's a different story. Uh, well, and you know, nobody has all the answers. No, no, no one community here in our area has solved the integrated piece alone. You're advocating an authority, or rather, GNRC is, is advocating an authority. That's one of with, the recommendations that came out of the, the master plan, and that was actually spearheaded or, or started the conversation from a group of Middle Tennessee solid waste directors on the operations side at the city and county level. Well, the reason I keep bringing it back up is then again is. You know, we don't generate enough waste to do some of these things. Um, you know, if we did just composting, we'd be pushing the limit there. And then what we're going to do with this stuff? I mean, I'd, I'd love to have three foot of topsoil on my farm. That would be great. Cover up all those rocks I got. But you know, after a while, I'm going to be tired of packing that stuff down. You don't need it. You know, I'm not going to need it. And you know, uh, of course, Mr. Piercy might need a little more than I do, but. You know, pretty soon they'll we're going to be up to our ears in compost all over the county, you know, and, and if we don't have an outlet for it. And we've seen that with recycling. We've seen that where all the recyclables were, were you know, bought typically on an international <coughs> level, and all of a sudden they weren't being bought anymore. So all of a sudden we had a, a, a stockpile of them. Well, see, and that's what bothers me. I don't know about y'all, about MERFs. You know, yeah, we can pull all that stuff up stacking a nice little pile over here, where's it going to go? And there are southeast markets, and that, that's what I, you know, a lot of people don't realize there are manufacturers in the southeast that will purchase materials that are 
that are from recycling facilities or material recovery facilities, the challenge is, are they clean enough? I, I understand that, but I've seen nationwide mm -hmm. uh, municipalities and counties or and states where uh, recycling is falling flat on their face because their market's dried up. And I yes. could see that happen again. I'm, that's not a market I feel a lot of confidence in is where I'm coming from. And I think the markets will rebound. I mean, it's a cycle. We don't know where, where they'll rebound to. Um, I think the more manufacturers that can actually use the recycled materials as their feedstock or as their starting point for what they're making, whether it's cardboard boxes or dashboards or... Yes, sir. Is there a model anywhere where there's a cooperative with what you're presenting or what what y'all are recommending from the G. Is there some place that's doing this that we can say, oh, that works there or it has worked there? Is there another place that that has actually occurred? There are several across the country. Um, the city of Huntsville has one with their waste to energy facility. Um, Seattle has one, Phoenix has one. But Huntsville burning. Sevier County has Sevier one. County. Sorry. But uh, Huntsville incinerates, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And Sevier so, County compost. Mm -hmm. but, but compost is only 20% of the overall problem, correct? You mean the compostable materials? Well, no, the, the, the waste stream. Mm -hmm. If there's 100% waste stream, then 20% of it is mm -hmm. compost. So you still got an 80% issue. And so that's what I'm saying. Is there a is there a model where there's several counties cooperating, like you're saying here, with your recommendation? Commissioner, I don't think that's correct on the, on the 20%, because when, when we took all the commissioners to, to Sevier County, I think it's much, much higher than that, and it's only about, they're composting everything from, from uh, Smoky Mountain National Park, Gatlinburg, Sevierville, Pigeon Forge, and Dollywood, they're doing about 80% of everything, and, and then they have a very small percentage that goes into their plastic landfill. I was just going by her yeah. numbers here with <laughs> 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 it says organic, it's 80%. So if you look at that, you could the organics are the 18%, the mixed paper could be put into that, the miscellaneous organics could be included in that. But I thought you could only compost. You, well, to be, it, it has to be clean, though, to be to be worthwhile to compost, doesn't it? It depends on which system you use, and it depends on what your end use is. These boxes are <laughs> <laughs> So here's what we were talking about as far as people. Here's the slide that you all had asked about. Um, there's your 86,000 tons. So that's actually, in 2018, that's actually what was generated from the Rutherford County Convenience Centers plus the city of Murfreesboro. But if you look at your population and you take the 325,000 people and the average of 6.43 pounds per person per day, there's your math on the screen. You come up with 381,000 tons a year. So all of a sudden you're looking at a difference of either 236 tons a day which is what you would be doing now if you focused on the 86,000, or you would be looking at the 1,045 tons a day. <coughs> so, I'm, gonna talk, I'm very confused. Okay. So I'm gonna ask questions here. Please do. So you're kind of saying that you want to develop an authority. So say for instance, Williamson County, they got a recycling center. And then Rutherford County's got a compost center. And then Wilson County's got a glass facility. So we're going to be taking product, and everybody's going to bring their trash to Rutherford County, and we're going to recycle it. And then all that's left over, if there's glass in it, we got to take it to Wilson County. But there's, there's some point it's going to be separated. So at your convenience center, you actually separate it. So the containers that have plastic or mixed paper, whatever that material recovery facility takes, those containers or the material in those containers will be taken to the material recovery facility, whichever county it's in. So these counties going to pay us to bring it here? So if I build a $42 million recycling center and they want to bring it here, they're going to pay us to do that? 
It depends on what the agreement is. But, there, but we've got to pay them when we take our stuff. And you, potentially. Okay. Um, and it, it's, it's are you going to pay it when it gets to the gate? Are you going to offer, you know, funding as part of an authority or as part of a group on the front end to actually make investment into facilities? Um, are you going to get a lesser rate when you get there because you're part of the authority, whereas folks that aren't part of the authority can still use the facility, but they have to pay a higher tip fee? And I'm going to go ahead and show you this slide. So, if you would, Vicki, back up one. Back up. Come on. What, what she's speaking of with that volume, we're responsible for residential trash within the county. That's all we're responsible for. That's the, the estimate of the residential trash within the county. That's where that number comes from. That doesn't include all of the private haulers. Is that correct? That, that is doing the math of what, you know, each residence generated four, uh, 6.43 pounds per person per day. And you've got the 325,000 residents. That's where that number is coming from. So it really doesn't matter who is picking it up today. That's still, if, if we're looking at managing or, or being having a disposal facility for our residents, that's the amount of trash that we need to, to dispose of. 381. Just residents. And that's strictly based on your population. Does that help? Clarify that I hope it might get more money. No, it's what all we're collecting is 86,000 tons. That's what we, the city of Marshboro and Rutherford County, collectively collect that amount. But isn't that the our, rest of that amount is done privately? Isn't that our obligation? Is to our obligation is met by having a convenience center. Yes. And that produced by we 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 hauled 42,000 tons from the convenience center. And Mercerboro chose to collect trash, they hauled another 40. Somewhere. Yeah. Right. So why, why, why do we go to 381? Why, we're going to create a convenience center. Uh, I guess I'm not back -pedaling. So, well, so if you're looking at this from the perspective of your, you're responsible for residential waste, if Several folks in Rutherford County chose to start using the convenience center. Yes, in lieu of their private hall, yes, it could escalate to somewhere between 86 and 381. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and if you see you, about that part of it. If you set up to manage all the residential trash, now you're getting close to having the amount of trash that you need to do what Robert was talking about doing by yourself. Uh oh. We don't have enough trash. We don't control enough of anything today. But if you set up to control the residential trash generated within this county, then you have enough trash to do something on your own. In other words, I don't know what that something is. But. In other words, if you have facilities, you would require any waste generated by residents in Rutherford County to come to your here. facilities. So so private haulers would have that. to come to our facility if we invested in one. Right. Mm -hmm. Whichever type of facility or all of them, depending on what they accepted. So here's the slide that the, the difficult part has been, what exactly is it when we say we need more garbage or what exactly is it, you know, what's, what does that look like? And basically when you look at the bottom, the green section, that represents the revenue to cover operating expenses. Total revenue and expenses are the entire rectangle. So at the top, you've got your deficit. In other words, if you're looking at your operating expenses, you either to, to meet the balance or to meet your need to operate, you either take in material from out of county or add to the material, which is what Mac just described as far as more, more volume, or you increase your tipping fee, whether that's to yourself or your other customers. So whoever's coming in the gate is paying more to use the facility. And if you choose just Rutherford County, then all of a sudden it's costing you a bit more than to allow others to bring material to your facilities so that they can help pay for it. So going back to your integrated system, if you could wave your magic wand <laughs> and you had the integrated system set up, what would that be? 
we know one of them is going to be a landfill, like I mm -hmm. said. In your mind, what would be uh, uh, the other facilities? Would you have a composted site or a site like Waste Away where you, uh, or Huntsville where you turn waste into energy? So what, what would your idea, ideal situation be? A truly integrated system would be a material recovery facility. Compost facility. A MRF is what you're yes. saying. Okay. A MRF, a compost facility, a waste to energy facility, and a landfill. That would be the. And, and the waste to energy facilities are fairly expensive, but then you also only have 10% on the back end typically, is, is the average that's landfill that they have. So a MRF, a landfill, a compost, and then a waste to energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd have to have C and D too, right? <clears throat> C and D, glass. Depends on if you're going to recycle those or where you're going to take them, what you're going to use them for. Glass can be used in some construction projects, depending on the quality, depending on the project. So you'd pull that out in your murder? Mm -hmm. You could. I mean, you, you pull that out in your convenience center right now, so all of a sudden you can haul just a load of glass with your roll off boxes, your roll off container. Well, Depending on how, how far you're going, and, and glass being aggregate, you're going to want to more like a dump truck than a oh. tractor. So you're thinking four components, and we could do all four here if we were 381 thousand tons. Well, I'm hopeful at some right. point in time. I mean, that's kind of a it's get into some economy of scale. There's with, the balance of with three or four hundred thousand again. Tons. How much of each? How much of that waste would would be able to go to compost site and or yeah? But yes, you should be able to feed all of those and integrated. Components. The waste to energy piece is the is the one that I would say you'd want to look really closely at because that's not a system you just flip the switch on and off. That's a 24-hour system that you have to continually feed. Commissioner Blair, do you have a comment? I still <clears throat> would at some point in time, and, and I like to think we're moving toward in that direction, that at some point we're going to take these numbers and we're going to advertise this, mm -hmm. you know, just like we would if we were wanting somebody to bid on a brand new school, and we're going to say this is, this is the amount of uh, trash that we have. Who would like to give us a price to solve our problem? Be it waste away or uh, incinerating, uh, composting. You know, right now we're we're playing with ghost numbers because we really don't know. At some point in time, we're going to have to get hard numbers based on the the uh, information that Mac will share and has shared, and uh, and and actually know what we're dealing with because right now everything is almost theory. And it is theory until you decide which direction you want to go as far as how much you want to manage, what types of facilities you want to build, if you want to build them. Um, you could, you know, potentially contract with a hauler or contract with a landfill for a hauler um, and haul it all that way. I mean, you, you've got options, but you have to decide which of those options you want to look at. And, you, and one of the ways would be a request for proposals with just the basics. This is the amount of trash we want to man maintain or manage. Um, this is what we can offer from convenience centers. This is what, you know, this is how it's collected. So tell us how you would then manage our waste stream. And, I, and I, in my mind, that is the answer mm -hmm. that, that, we, that we get as many proposals as we can and, and dissect and say, as a commission, this is what we think is best for our county community. And I think you would get a, I think you would get a wide variety of responses, and I think you would be able to pick from looking at, okay, are we going to compost this way and this, you know, with these materials, or are we going to? I'm not saying pick as if just pick off the top, but to actually pick and study. If we did this, then these materials would be included there. And I think we that, that process will also give the community the input, the opportunity to to see the proposals and and share their opinion publicly as well. Yes, sir. 
And you could ask for the, you know, you could ask for a request for quotes separately in a separate envelope so that there's no money involved in it when you're when you're on the front end looking at the options. Certainly. Okay. I think we're having a very healthy discussion here, but let's let her get back to her presentation oh, and then we'll... I thought she was finished. I'm sorry. It's all <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So basically, this was the balance. This is how you're balancing your balance sheet. I know that when people say, well, you need more garbage, well, why do we need more garbage? Well, you either need more material or you need a higher tip fee. And basically, that's just the balance between the two, which we've had this conversation already. And so where do we go? Um, basically, you determine who your customers will be. Um, look at it from the perspective of all the things we've been talking about I and mean, we've covered pretty much everything on this slide already. Um, choose how to manage each material. Um, if you're going to have other, other government entities, what does the governing structure look like? Who are those partners? Um, and look at your available infrastructure. What do you need to meet the pieces that you're missing? It's a diverse industry with a lot of moving parts, and I admire you all for, for diving into it and working hard to, to understand it and, and be educated on it. And That's the last slide? I have one more slide. I'll give you my disclaimer after this. No, it's not a coupon. <laughs> on the busiest retail day of the year, the day after Thanksgiving. And their whole purpose was, we want to focus on purpose rather than our profit. And the CEO at that point said, we can do better for future generations, but we must act now. So this is their campaign. I do not work for them. I don't get any forms here. But I saw this commercial, and I thought, you know, that's not garbage related, but it really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's eye-opening, even to somebody that's been in this business for 20 years. You don't think about all those things every day. Rebecca, can you email us a copy of your slide? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'll be glad to. Mr. Chairman, may I ask? Go ahead. Robert, uh, Robert you asked the question if you could uh, wave your magic wand, what would be the components of an integrated system? Well, we got four numbers. So I was going to ask the, the four items, rather. So the next magic wand would be perhaps can we put Wayne's request in a, in a magic wand scenario? We know your four components. What is that? What? How do those? Where? Where do those fit into the RFP? Where do those four go? Yeah. So, I would picture a request for proposals being something as basic as, we are Rutherford County. This is our. This is our population. This is what we expect to manage. This is what we've managed um, as far as volume. If this were your problem or if this were your opportunity to bid, what would you say to do? Leave it open-ended enough that folks can say, okay, well, I would compost these materials, but I don't know what I would do with the other. I would recycle these materials in a material recovery facility. I don't necessarily have a solution for these materials. So basically break it out into either categories of materials, similar to what we had in that slide earlier, or um, you know, specific materials that you already collect as recyclables use some pieces of the of the system you have in place now. But I think if you leave it open-ended enough, you get a lot of feedback as far as what folks, and, I, and I'm not gonna tell you you're gonna get numbers right off the bat. I think I think that's asking a lot. I, there's a competitive, this is a very competitive industry, and there are, um, the minute, you know, that number's out there, it's public record. So I would say if you, if you get an idea of the actual proposal, the actual ideas on the front end, 
that, that that's the most important step on the front end to help you decide specifically. Because then you're going to get an idea of who, who, would come, who would come in and bid on it, who would actually respond to it. Um, then that opens the conversation to specific things or specific are, options. Are you aware of a community or a region that has an integrated? Have you seen this in practice? I have seen it in practice, yes, but not in Tennessee. There, there are bits and pieces of it. So, Stuart Montgomery County is a is, a, is an authority with the Bi County Landfill. They don't have a MRF. They don't have a compost facility, but they have the landfill piece. Where have you, have you seen it out of state? Seattle, Austin. With four components. Pretty sure Seattle has four components. And do they run? by the county or they run by one private industry? It depends. Okay, so you're, it's all over. There's, there's not yeah, a model that says... No. And it's based so on... For like, if there's a republic here, so there's not a model you see where there's republic. Mm -hmm. And under republic, there's four components. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that yet? I have not. They can probably... Um, you know, we went to San Jose. They can probably do all four components, but do all four components make sense where they are? Um, does waste energy make sense? Is there an energy? Is there someone to buy the energy? And if you have to convert the steam to electricity, is there someone to buy the electricity or this at the steam level? Those are the pieces on the back end that you have to ask. I'm under the impression, <coughs> and I guarantee you, every one of these commissions, there's a lot of people watching to see what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, would that be fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay, so if all these people are watching what we're going to do, and we decide that we want to do this, mm -hmm. so. You feel confident that all of them would just jump in line and be part of it? <laughs> I don't feel like everyone would jump in line. I think if you if you look at the map strategically and you look at what facilities are already there, um, I think taking a look at that, taking a closer look at that to see if there is interest there. I'm not going to. I'm not sure that any of those counties would be interested. I know that Stewart and Montgomery County make up a bi county um, authority. Severeville has Severe Sumner County is an authority. They actually created their authority when they opened their wastewater treatment, or I'm sorry, uh, waste to energy treatment plant, or waste to energy plant. When they closed it um, in the early 90s, I think it was, they continued to carry on the authority. So they maintained the structure, but they don't maintain the waste to energy component. So Williamson hadn't given you an okay. <clears throat> Wilson hadn't given you an okay. It depends on it depends on where they are in the process. Like these these other counties or cities have contracts with other. They have contracts with landfills or haulers or both. So they may have a contract with Republic to haul and landfill their waste in another landfill, which when we mentioned Williamson County uses um, West Camden. So. Williamson County has a contract with Waste Management to use their West Camden landfill. Waste Management hires a third-party contractor to haul garbage from Williamson County to West Camden. So basically, they have, an, they have a contract just like, just like Davidson County does that says there's a finite point in time when this contract ends. There's a date certain when this contract's in, contract ends or when you have to make a decision to extend. So they have those things in place now. Which could be eight years. Could be. It could be 15 years. Yeah. That you don't. Well, I mean, I think we're under the impression we're going to do something as soon as possible. I mean, is that pretty much how it is? I mean, that's how the impression I'm getting from the commissioners. Mm -hmm. So, if we did this and we gave you the green light, what are we looking at? Five, six years for you to put this together? That depends on what you want it to look like. Depends on who the who the partners are. It depends on what types of facilities are. In the, in the area already that have capacity that can manage the volume. Like I said, there's a uh, Marshall County owns a material recovery facility down in Marshall County in Lewisburg. And they may be a responder to the RFP. Maybe. And so we want your stuff. I but, don't know. But there is no authority that is multi-county present, correct? Montgomery and Stewart County are by county authority. They're a solid waste authority. Okay, but they're... But, but they're, they have the landfill. But they're full covering burying cover program. So yes. really not an authority because the structure is there, but they only have one component of the actually of the of the infrastructure or of the 
system. Correct. Well, if your county chose to go with Murfreesboro, would that not create an authority? You could. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that really, I mean, you, you really can look at this and say, what does that authority look like? Or what does that governing body look like? And, and decide. I mean, you you get to reach out and say, these, you know, this makes sense to do Rutherford County with the city of Murfreesboro, or this, you know, depending on well, the Well, we've got more than just the city of Murfreesboro. Mm -hmm. We have three other municipalities. So. Becky, there was, we looked at it one time, I don't remember, up in the northern east, northeast state, there was an authority that took care of a lot of stuff. And I don't remember what the school was. Yes, there was. How many I'll MERFs? That's okay. How many MERFs are in? You know how many MERFs are already up in there? Is there a final the energy? state of Tennessee? Yeah. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Is there a bunch? You mentioned one or two. I don't know off the top of my head. How many compost facilities? Oh, yes. there? Um, maybe three. And then waste energy, there's a handful. Just there, are, there are components similar to waste away, but a waste energy facility like what they have in Huntsville is we don't have one of those in Tennessee, and that's more of an air air permit type facility because of the because of the output versus a solid waste. Back in the past, haven't you made a comment that we take care of our other three cities through our convenience center? We can do that, or uh, they law out, you know, it's state law says we have to take care of them, and that's a tax. If we chose to, we could do what they call a special property tax in the district and have heard that question for them, and then they would have to pay whatever it costs. Uh, that would be a user fee. You know, if we went that route, in my opinion, you look at Marshboro's already doing it. Smart Oval Burn and Eagle will be the first three that you take on. And then the next step would be looking at the large subdivisions within the county, you know, with 40 to 60 homes, whatever that number would be to make it, make it feasible, and you start providing that service for those. Convenience centers would still stay in existence for missed pickup days. If you're not going to provide curbside recycling and trash, uh, then you need to, for the recycle centers, you still need to be there for the bulk items. Uh, you still need your convenience centers even if you have cur cur curbside collection. And state law also says if you have 95% of the homes with curbside collection, you don't have to have any convenience centers. Mr. Hey, good question. Right Would you prefer Becky or Rebecca? Either or. Either or. <laughs> Growing up, if I was well, Rebecca, I, I was Rebecca in trouble. Up, so. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned waste to energy as one of the components, and you said that you'd have to have a uh, uh, customer. Well, and I'm asking you because, you know, you're one of the authorities I go to to find out answers. Um, I was told when I went up to waste away, State laws have changed so that TVA uh, or uh, our local authority can transmit electricity if we generate it now. For instance, if we set up a, a waste of energy site, we can sell that energy basically to ourselves. And the reason I say that is I've, I had our finance director and the finance director for our schools give me totals on how much money we spend on electricity for our own buildings. And it's uh, $11 million a year. And I, I got a little different figure from both of them, but you put t together the schools and the county's buildings. So it sounds to me like we've got a customer that's going to be pretty well in place if we can, in fact, generate electricity and sell it to ourselves. You know, as long as, I, what I'm asking you is, am I correct assuming that we could go waste energy and sell it back to ourselves or consume it ourselves depends on and how have you're it transmitted? It. Depends on how you're going to get it there. So I think you have to look at, if you if you generate it at point A, how are you going to get it to each school and or, you know, the, the places that you would Well, that's, it, then that's what I'm asking you. I was under the understanding that Middle Tennessee Electric could transmit it for us mm -hmm. if we were generating. So if we set up a waste of energy up in Laverne at Interchange City right there, where we could take all that huge waste from Davidson 
and ours without tracking it all over the county, and we got the rail system there. We could generate power there as long as Middle Tennessee Electric can distribute it. And that's what I want to make sure. Uh, I'm not familiar with the legislation. I will look it up and find out for you. And it, may, it may be a question of, do you know that? Interchange City is National Electric, so it's not Middle Tennessee. Okay. Well, part, I mean, but part of Interchange City is in Rutherford County. I mean, that's the largest industrial site in the state of Tennessee. Right. Yeah, you're right. right. It's NEA. And that, what you're that speaking cool? of is, is Mike Webb with Waste Way. I'm talking with him about it. Uh, so, he has talked to people in Tennessee Electric that says, yes, if that's what Rutherford County needs to do, we can do that. There's some other people who talk to people who says, no, why would we want to do that? So I don't know the answer to that. But, why would uh, we not want to? Why would if we're generating electricity and we've got to sell it, why would we not want our own power? Well, but Middle Tennessee Electric may not want to do that for us, is what some other people were saying. So I don't know the answer either way. They well, may not want to transmit But the, the, the theory would be that, that's what Steve and I was talking about, is you know, if, if we generate electricity in Laverne, Christiana Middle is not getting that electricity. Well, I'm just saying. somewhere else. But it, they're calling it willing the power. So that would. It would all get used, but you get credit for it if it's if, if there. The other thing that would help with too is, is you may have some large companies that are large users that need that green energy stuff. So that's, work. that's the other reason I keep suggesting Interchange City because you do have those type sites like Bridgestone there, Caterpillar, those two, Angram Books. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I, I would like to let, know more about what we can and cannot do with the uh, electricity, you know, whether it would be NEA, whether it be our own cooperative here, Little Tennessee Electric. Did your public not try that a few years ago, sending it over to the VA and cloning the idea because it wasn't a constant flow? I don't know the answer to that. I'll find out. Okay. <clears throat> Are you questioning your career choice now? No. I love <laughs> this business, and, and it's it's fun to put the pieces together, and I truly believe there's room for everybody. I mean, I think we need private industry. I think we need some you know, government, obviously, um, entities that have to provide service to the residents. Um, that that could have been in the VFI day <laughs> before Republic took it. Probably in the Allied day. In the middle. Between the two. We're burning trash, they were burning methane. Uh, yeah, I recall that. No, I, I love this industry. I love, I love I'm, I'm it. I'm I know you are. Some days you do wonder, this is an emotional topic. <laughs> no doubt. It's emotionally driven, it's environmentally driven, it's a political type. It's, it's, it's you know, the definition of a wicked problem. Well, and, and the potential for the cost factor mm -hmm. is, is, is huge because we've had a free lunch for quite some time. And yes, I keep going back to the phrase that there's no such thing as a free lunch. Mm -hmm. And eventually you have to pay for it. You do. And, and it's hard because you all don't have the components in place. And, and when Commissioner Harris says, you know, what about these other counties? They already have agreements in place. So they know that they're, you know, that they have service or landfill space or whatever it is they're doing under contract. They have a contract. For time, though. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they do expire. And there is an expiration date on all. Sure. And that's a scary part. Oh, sure it is. And it's something that we haven't, we haven't faced. And I've said many times, I don't know that I was, in, in 10 years ago, working with the city of Franklin, we were actually hauling our own waste to Middle Point Landfill. And the question then was, golly, what happens if this place ever fills up? And here we are 10 years later having the same conversation. I would, ha I would hate for the conversation to, to stop here if, if, if Republic came in and said, we have several years of life left, it's no problem. That's great. I would hate for the conversation to end here because then it just leads to the next generation having the same conversation. And one tornado. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you never know. I, I will tell you, having cleaned up the city of Franklin in 2010 and been responsible for, you know, all of the logistics there, it was it was a big undertaking, and there was a lot of material. Yes, ma'am. Are there any graphs or maps on future proposed? 
landfills in Middle Tennessee or the Tennessee area? Cur you know everybody's just not going to stop. Currently, there are um, there are no permits that have been applied for for a new landfill. And there was some legislator legislation thrown out last year, and I don't think it passed to stop a landfill within five miles of any residential area. It's, it's, is that, I think I, I see it's, it's it, started it, 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 with, it started with one mile, within one mile, right? It started within one mile, so no expansion and or landfill within one mile of a residential structure, or residential property. Um, and then it went to five five miles out, and it, it did not pass. There, there is no location for a landfill in the state of Tennessee that's, that that would fit in. There's a house too close anywhere they live. And that's going by what the parcel is. Well, you and I know how county or governments work. If they wanted the landfill there, they could go over there and condemn that house and take it for public use. So. I'd say there are places that that could happen. So, well, that, that was going through. TDEC did not leave that that thing. So I, but I did ask the <coughs> director of TDEC. I said, if this passes, that means the only place you can land, build a landfill in the state of Tennessee would be a national or a state park. He said, oh, don't even start that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying there's there's people that have kind of thought thought about the future landfills. So. Well, Murray County a few years ago, uh, in within the county, passed a no landfills within two miles of the Duck River because there was getting ready to possibly be a landfill there, so they stopped it. That well, they were building one in Wilson. Am I correct? There's one permitted. There's a permitted in Wilson, but now they just put a whole million dollar subdivision around it. So chances there's, of that getting built is pretty slim. It's already permitted. There's land in it's Wilson. It's permitted, land. but they just put a whole entire. Williamson neighborhood County. around it. Williamson County has land that's permitted. They don't, you know, they they don't have an intention of opening it anytime soon. That I'm aware of. But it take what five years if we started right now? If I say if we decide we won't put a landfill. If you already have the permit, so so buying the property, running those preliminary tests, and getting the permit is one is one section or one step. So buying the land getting the permit and then actually starting construction is, I mean, that's your steps. Um, and that's very simplified. So you could figure at least five years may be aggressive. Are there any laws that pro prohibits one county from owning a landfill in another county? I don't know. Not that I'm aware I was going to say, I would guess if, if you... Marion County owns a landfill in Alabama. So we could go... Okay. So we could county. So we could go to another county and buy a thousand acre farm and have our own landfill if we could get it permitted and they permitted it. The county was okay with it. It would just be the regular process, I would say. Yeah. The same, same thing as a Republic landfill, more or less. It would just be owned by Rutherford, Rutherford County. County mm -hmm. used in a barren area somewhere in another county that maybe wasn't 112 miles away. And maybe that county would want to partner in and partner use the with, facility. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where that integrated system and working together comes. Yeah. It's where Mr. Pete loses his vote. <laughs> and here are the recommendations on the brochure. So you see the integrated piece here. Specifically these are more the next steps we were going to and we're, we're, on our, we're on our way to having those conversations. I've mentioned all of those. Well, what's, what's left of that taste in my mouth is that is I've got two uh, rock quarries in my district, and guess who regulates rock quarries after they're approved? Once we approve them, we no longer have any say in you know, a rock quarry. You know, they can blast to their little heart's content. People can complain, but they have to address it from the state. If we do a landfill, guess who oversees that too? If we turn it over to somebody else, it, it's the state regulates it. So, you know, we basically give up. Well, if we lose ownership, then we're giving up what say we have to the state. And what I've seen from the state, it's not made me very happy or trusting. I have no confidence in them. 
what if you had a landfill that had a rock <laughs> No, I mean, there you know there are lots of combinations out there. Some some counties own the property or the facility, and they are under contract with a private company to operate it. Or you know there are lots of and, and a rock quarry. Maybe I'm not sure. It just depends on where it is and what the what the geologic survey looks like. And well, I, I hate to bring something up. We got enough to discuss just about landfills, so I won't go any further with that. But. You know, my point being is, when you give up that authority, you, know, you have no control. And that's that's what bothers me about not being able to say, no, this is not going to happen in this county. And I still say, whether well, if we have an authority, you know, we're going to have to have some way to control that authority to make sure that they're going to pay for it the damage that's being done to our roads and the infrastructure that we're going to have to upkeep. Um, you know, like I said, um, I'm not from Missouri, but you're going to have to show me. <laughs> and all of those things can be, be put in contract and or agreements um, along the way. Or from the lessons you've learned now, you know what to include in the future. You know what you would do different if you well, had it. We've learned some hard lessons. Mm -hmm. That landfill that she mentioned is going to close in 90 days is a county owned facility that they partnered with a private company. And the county was taking care of the leachate, was part of their deal. The private company took in some stuff that really messed up the leachate, so the county could no longer treat it. They were suing each other and they wound up in court. It had a hundred year lifespan, but they're closing it. Hmm. Have you finished your presentation? Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have any more questions for, for me? No, but. Well, I thank you all for your time. And I appreciate, appreciate you all coming. bringing all your information. <laughs> very I want you to come back again. The mud. The mud. Yeah. No, very enlightening. You get down to the four components, right? Yeah, I will. Yeah. And if I can be of help to you, you all can. You all know how to find me and reach out to me. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. With y'all's permission, we're going to let Mr. Murphy come to the table. He's asked to speak. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to uh, say that the Republic's happy to present. Y'all have invited them in December. they just like to present in January, if that's possible. December 18th is right before Christmas, and they're working on some opportunities with MTSU to have to be able to discuss, but they won't be ready till January. So. What was our date in January? 22nd. 22nd. So the 22nd. The 22nd would be fine. That's all right with that. Would the committee care to vote on it? Show of hands. Gay? Uh, yes to public yeah. comment on January 22nd. Yes. 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 Nay? Bring them up. Thank you so much. Okay, don't jump Thank up. You. Now that you came up here, I've got some questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I got a phone call from you inviting us to come tour, yes. and I want you to talk about that. Sure. And, sure. And I didn't know if you had one specific date. And I was going to catch you having a specific date. I want sure. everybody to hear the, the, the first week in January, or excuse me, first week in December, we've got some time blocked off. And if y'all would like to come as a, as a group um, or individually, I've invited Ms. all of y'all, but I've uh, Mr. Uh, Blair and, and uh, Mr. Harris, Commissioner Harris, are already on the calendar. But if you guys would like to come out any of those days, and we've got Mr. Jernigan here as well, who can help us coordinate those. But it needs to be during the day, obviously, for safety reasons and also visibility reasons. So and it's a what, tour of the, the landfill. Mm -hmm. what, what Several of us have already toured it. You know, I'm not trying to be you, ugly or anything, you know, but uh, you've seen it. You've seen it. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm, I have not responded, you, but I'm. Wish to. I, I was going to likewise. Speak yeah, go ahead. So I, I intend to do a tour. You need to. Yeah, yeah. So I, I used to take a lot of stuff out there on a regular basis. If you'll let me grab my calendar. But can we all, how many of us can go at one time? Steve, do you know anybody? I, that's up to them. How many? No, no, no. I meant how many, son, how many, Robert, you, you're the, the veteran here. How many of us can go at one time and not 
be breaking. It, can we all go? Sunshine. Sunshine. Yeah, any kind of sunshine, any kind of. So I'm just not the bad. <laughs> we're talking about votes. We can go. Okay, yeah. to my understanding. Just like you've done with other tours. Mm -hmm. That's fine. As long as, like we as, long as you don't deliberate, as long as you don't like talk about the we, we did. could we could invite, you know, someone from the media also, you know. I yeah. assume y'all are welcome yes, to have a media along. So. I, mean, I don't ever have a problem with that. Yes, for tour republics. Oh, yeah. so, well, take your date. I, I'm yes, curious sir. to see when you two guys are going. Maybe we'll just coordinate and make it one time. Okay. That'd, be, that'd, that'd be good. good. Sitting at the, at the chair, if you don't mind me. Sure, sure. Quick. If I understand it correctly, I think it's just wanting to, for informational, for you to see it, you know what you're talking about when you talk about landfill. You know, I don't know, Mike, I can take us on a tour for the county one too. It's the same day or something. I don't know. Oh, you see, there's a brush pile and a trailer. But if you had never, she could see it from there. But if you had never seen it, you know, yeah. you might since you're in the vehicle go by and take the yes. fruits from there. Kind of know the lay of the land, so to speak. So, so by going is a great way to have to do. By going as a group, we'll probably have to advertise this. That's what I was yeah. referencing. Just what, what, you do what just all the yeah. ramifications. And I don't so know. It could be. We need to check into that. It might have to have minutes. Try. The the third of December is is, is uh, <laughs> Mr. Harris is coming out. What date is that? The third of December. That's the same day we had our next public courts meeting. Is that correct? Yes. 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 And become. Going out, no, in the morning. <coughs> Any day that week. Would it not be simpler if we went one at a time? It might be. And then, you know, I've invited you individually to not have to have to worry about uh, open meetings since you can't deliberate. If it's just Wayne, where are you out. going? Uh, looking through my calendar, trying to figure it yeah, out. I'm What's sorry that? about that? I've got it on here too. Commissioner Blair's the fourth, I believe. Lean sticks. I was going to say, right. the right. open time for me. So then more than one not coming a day, just not coming at the same time. Y yes, sir. Of course. Yeah. We've got uh, Commissioner Blair coming at 10 o'clock, and if one of y'all wanted to come at, you know, say, 11 15. And what, what day is that? That is the, it's the four. Third, I'm on the third. Ten. If it's two or more, we need to have it. Yes, that's sir. The, some of the black so and white yeah. of. Even if it's separate visits, was that a, even if it's separate no, visits, no. Like, you so know, saying, if it's two or more at the same time, yeah, we need to advertise and just yeah, like. So oh, what 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 time do you have leave? So uh, on the fourth. Yeah. So on the fourth, just yeah, yeah any time from eleven to <coughs> say four. Yeah. So what about one o'clock? Eleven. One o'clock. Be correct. Do you want to say eleven? Eleven. Okay. And, uh, the third Tuesday? Uh, on Tuesdays? Uh, uh, Craig's on at 10 a.m. Okay. So I could say come a separate time on that day. But. So 11 15? Sure. So I never been there before. Do you have like threads or something? Or so, yeah. yeah, so you need to go to the front gate, oh. and then there's an office uh, on the right. Go and across the scales, the office on the right. Oh, okay. If you go at 12 o'clock, you might get lunch. And, and if any of y'all need to reschedule or something comes up, just let us know. Should be good. Uh, what's your um, name? Yes, and well, <laughs> let, let me get that to you. Uh, I got that. <coughs> yeah, in case something happened, you know. invited Chairman Cush as well. So. Well, since y'all have been coming in January, something that I would like for you to do for me, and I don't know about the rest of you guys, but just kind of hearing her proposal of four of those four items oh, no. that she would have for an authority, uh, I'd kind of like to know what y'all's thoughts about that would be. And, you know, setting up an authority uh, you know, of course, we can subcontract that. And if we do subcontract it, I mean, we're, all this would be for bids. You know, it's not saying, hey, let's make a deal here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying 
I'd like to hear what you could propose that y'all could possibly do. You know, you can do a MRF, you can do the compost, you can do the landfill. Of course, I saw all those three components in San Jose. So I know you do them. You know, the, the other component of waste to energy, you know, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that too. But y'all can come with kind of uh, a plan, something that you could do with those four components in mind. I'd like to hear it. And maybe in another county. <coughs> well, I, yeah, I'm not saying that they would all necessarily have to be here. If we formed an authority, uh, you know, assuming Davidson would be one of them since that would give us the volumes to do these things. You know, I don't think 300,000 tons just out of this county is going to be enough to do four components. You know, that's, you know, my personal thoughts as far as keeping something running. That's why Davidson County didn't work on the waste energy is they couldn't keep it running constantly. Oh, yeah. And if you, you don't have the volume for MRF and you've got to hire people to sit there and sort this stuff, you can't say, oh, well, I don't have enough today, guys, go home. Yeah. You know, because they're not going to come back tomorrow. Unless you get a full-time work, so I mean, those engineers. Uh, and line. But anyway, that's kind of give you an idea of what I'd like to hear. I don't know about the rest of the guys, but you know, kind of, kind of know the problem and what's the public's potential solution of it. Uh, so, so on four, uh, no, four, I'd like four, to four. add two things. Were you speaking? I'm sorry. Oh, I Did I hear you? I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah, Commissioner. Four I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to see on your bid. Two things that some total. I'd like to see what are you, what are you going to benefit this community, this county? Yes, sir. All right, and not just about trash, but you know, what can you? What are you going to do as far as help this community? Number two, new technologies, because I've been studying up. There's a lot of technologies out there, especially some towards smell, and I'd like to know what y'all think on them, because y'all would know more than I would. Okay. So those are two things I want to see. I'll put it in our homework. Is there anything else? Thanks for letting me come up. No problem. Can I bring a constituent with me that's I've been leaning on? Of course. Reference. Of course. Oh, so you've been doing so much time. Yes, sir. Did y'all get your date set for the visit? I do. Everybody? I admit it. If y'all yeah, need to reschedule or anything comes up, just, just give me an offer. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Before you got any questions, ever. Thank you, Our next meeting is December the 18th. Is there anybody we would like to come and have anything presented, ask any questions from, or we just want to work with Mr. Mellon? We had talked about there were uh, waste of, uh, excuse me. Waste management. Waste management and, and an acronym, CF, or some new player in Middle Tennessee. Do you have them jotted down? GFL. 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 Green for line. Either one of those. Either one will probably be good, but we don't have information to feed them. Well, what about them feeding us? Their, their professions in the business, is, and it, you're correct, it may just be an absolute waste of time, but can uh, a, a waste, a, a solid waste professional to sit down and just talk about visions of the four components or where they've worked elsewhere. Where, and, and maybe talk open ended. You're, yeah, I'm, I'm good with it. It's, it's up to the committee. Is, you know, what we have not heard from is, of course, we, we know about waste to waste process, but a strict uh, incinerator to energy process. Of course, Huntsville has one. Who, is there anybody that we could contact that would be interested in talking to us about that process? Well, I've sent out emails to Waste Away. They have, I mean, um, Waste Management, and I have got no return on nothing. So if anybody else, maybe I'm not important, but maybe somebody else might mm -hmm. reach out to. Doc Holliday is the uh, director for the Waste Authority in Huntsville, and he's been there inception and he was a commissioner for the city or a councilman for the city when he started but he has been here to speak to the thought waste director before it may be possible if he's available and they can get him come and explain the authority how it was set up why it was set up what they're <coughs> they have the waste energy facility they have a recycle program i think republic services actually does the recycling as the birth uh, and then uh, they have a landfill as well and they service 
their authority is Madison County, the city of Madison, and the city of Lincoln. And with the incinerating uh, process these days, with the scrubbers the way they are, you know, with coal plants and you know that that pollution issue is is drastically lowered because of the new technology with scrubbers. So it's at least some, another, another uh, process to to look at here. So did Mac suggest this gentleman from Huntsville come up for December? Was that your yeah. suggestion was for, I can you invite that like person with the committee care to hear him? I would. Some of you, it, it went to Huntsville what, two years ago, whatever, probably met him then. But, and then uh, Commissioner Harris was asking about the household hazardous waste collection. Last time I was down there, they just got their building built and should be open by now. So <coughs> you could ask some questions to him about the operational cost, the cost of the building facility and all that. It's been 18 years, I think, since I've been down there. Wow. And I'd like to, I'd like to see what they've got to say. So I'll make a recommendation or a motion that we invite <coughs> someone from Oswald to come up and talk to us. I'll call him. I'll, I'll come, come down. <laughs> You're going to try to contact him, though. Right? If that's what you want me to do, yes, sir. Is that what y'all want to do? Please. Please do. Please do. So, Mr. Pease made the motion. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, one other, while we're talking about waste and energy, I've still got some problem, I, not problems, I've got some questions from, uh, I guess it's waste of waste in my family where we went mm -hmm. And the questions I've got has got to do with their boilers and how they hold up with uh, generating electricity. So I, I, sometimes I'd kind of like to hear back from them. They can write us. But I'd like for us to contact them and get some more information on that. Especially if they've got. Yeah, at Marshall. Yeah, yeah, where we went there. But, you know, of course, they didn't have a facility there generating electricity. They were making, <coughs> they were making their pellets that they used for fuel. What I want to know is the process from fuel to generate electricity, where they've got a facility set up and doing that. They don't. And, well, I think they were setting one up in Jacksonville. Told us here he had no operating facility anywhere. He had one in another country and it shut down for lack of something. They, they, they have nothing they operating. They have some things that works, but I don't think they have anything operational. Well, yeah. that's something I want to know. You know, if they don't have anything operational, I, I want to. I want to know someplace that's burning this fuel, and if that fuel is actually workable in in a modern boiler. You know, I've heard them say yes. This is what we'll do, but I, I want to see. Are here without what retrofitting. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if they have to retrofit, I mean, we're talking about building new. We built, so we wouldn't be retrofitting. But I want to know, you know, are there boilers or generators out there we can generate electricity from their fuel or steam? So I was contacted last week, maybe two weeks ago, with a company similar to Waste Away. Uh, they were going to come. <coughs> they misunderstood. They thought Little Point was the county land field. Didn't realize it was not ours. But they they want to take care of the trash and generate electricity and sell it back to the grid. And I explained to them we're in the TVA area. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they do have facilities up and running within the United States, but not here in California. A few other places that high electricity. Costs. Is it just me, or does anyone else on this committee think maybe we should talk to Murphy's firm and see what their plans are? Commissioner, I think we should talk to everybody. You know, we keep seeing their numbers on the board with ours. You know, they may not be ready to expose what they're going to do. I don't have a clue. But we've heard nothing directly from them other than Joey, you know. You know, I'd like to hear from... Uh, Darren? Darren and the mayor, anybody with authority, you know. We're sitting here talking about maybe going with them. They may not have any intentions. You don't know. You know, it's just my thought. 
think we've got a good idea. Just about that. How would you achieve that? Uh, invite one of them yeah. and uh, request. You could just have to invite request them, ask to see if they were interested in sitting in on a meeting and commenting. You know, maybe giving us their views of, of their vision of what they intended it or wanted it. You know, it may be something totally different from what we're even looking at. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, who, who would put that invitation out? Oh, yeah, just call and ask. Right, mate. That, I don't mind doing it, but that should come from either you or Commissioner Cush. Right, right. I'll get cushioned. Even if it's uh, to our regular schedule, public works, or yeah. just first available. Yeah. Just whenever they would have time, you know. Yeah. We may be redundantly covering some of the stuff they've already touched on. Good, good, good great suggestion. Anybody have anything else? Hearing nothing, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Somebody. Okay. Meeting adjourned.